We are recording. Is now being recorded. We are now, like I like to say on all my videos, we are live, even though we're not live. <laughs> People are gonna get so tired of hearing me say that. Oh, I feel like it's gotta be it's gotta be my thing though. I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right, so Cal, we got you on here. You are the CKD guy, right? Sure. You want to okay. be that guy? You want to be that guy? You are the CKD guy. Um, uh, and then yeah. people listening may wonder, what the heck is CKD? Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, I kind of met you through other people and other groups um, and just interacting on, in, you know, on, on Facebook and, and different things. And I think we have very similar um, ideas about nutrition and fitness and, you know, the whole nutrient density and, and try to be whole foods and just try to general health. But then we also realize that there are other things out there and there are other, other reasons and things that people may want to do some things um, performance wise, physique wise, whatever it may be that um, there's so many options and there's so many different ways you can do nutrition that, you know, just to fit it in someone's lifestyle, you can't say one size fits all. So what else is out there? Um, and I think CKD definitely falls into that realm. I had never really heard of it until I met you. Um, so I just wanted to maybe educate people on what is CKD, why people would want to be interested in it. Um, how do you know if it's right for you? How do you do it? Like just some general background information on what CKD is, how you got into sure. it. Sure. Right there. Okay. Well, yeah, let me get start from the beginning of basically how I found the ketogenic diet to begin with. Okay. Uh, I've been following ketogenic diet for about two years now. All right. Um, and and uh, it actually kind of found me because uh, at the time, two years ago, for whatever reason, I uh, had this yeast overgrowth in, growth in my blood and it caused a lot of rashes, eczema flared up and uh, even like some like fungus on my skin. Mm. So I basically just you know, did my research online and saw that yeast um, feeds off sugar. So I you know, cut all sugar, cut off high f sugar fruits, high sugar veggies. Yep. Um, and, you know, then I, I was basically just eating meats and green veg. And I was kind of getting bored and uh, started looking for recipes. And I kept seeing this keto thing. Never heard of it. Right. Uh, get fat adapted. You know, all that jazz. So I did what a lot of people do, starting with the ketogenic diet and started, you know, dipping my chicken in olive oil, <laughs> cans of coconut cream to, you know, I'm making all these soups and having like thinking like, okay, now I'm eating healthy. And I was dropping weight, but, uh, uh, but I, you know, I was also not really realizing that I was losing muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, then, uh, luckily early in my journey, I found a lot of, uh, groups like the keto gains groups and, uh, ketogenic intermittent fasting groups yep. that really focuses on adequate protein right. and, uh, you know, that, that should be the, the focus first and foremost. Absolutely. And so when I did that, I kind of started seeing my body changing uh, not only was I getting lean, but I was starting to see some muscle mass come back. So I, I come from a paleo CrossFit background, um, and I kind of stopped training um, due to injuries and whatever. But as I was leaning out, it kind of motivated me to start lifting again, at least. Sure, sure. And when I was doing that, uh, I was getting great results and. Uh, you know, I was getting those newbie gains again, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it just was really motivating. So I just kept at it. And uh, then, you know, came to a point where I was okay, I was getting like real lean, I was about, you know, 125 pounds, 10% body fat. Wow. Okay. And, uh, you know, my wife was like, okay, you're kind of getting like, <laughs> oh. scary looking. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm not a, a bodybuilding competitor or anything like that um so you know uh i was just way too lean so sure. um you know i just increased my calories i kept eating and i guess because of the metabolic response that i get after following keto for so long and, and becoming fat adapted very well 
that I just could not gain mass. Mm-hmm. I was I was eating about at a point I was eating about 250 grams fat a day, 350 grams protein. Wow. And you know, like I said, you know, 125 pounds. Yeah, and just couldn't get any more, right? I just I just would not yeah, would just not gain. So okay. I figured okay, I, I need some guidance. I read an online and, um, Jerry McAllister, he was a, a mind in the ketogenic intermittent fasting group. And uh, he basically convinced me that uh, I need to uh, reintroduce carbs back in my diet. And I was very hesitant at first mm-hmm. um, because I was worried that I was going to get these flare ups. Sure. And uh, so basically he, he told me that, no, this is, this is a very like, um, you know, normal uh type diet and it's part it's still keto and it's called the cyclical ketogenic diet basically okay. where you follow a standard ketogenic diet for five to six days of the week and then on weekends ideally or any time that suits your schedule you would do a carb load and um, basically reverse the macros okay uh, still you know focusing on protein first and foremost yep. but yep. instead of um, having fat be your energy guide, you basically um, make fats go very low and increase carbs at uh, very a lot. Uh, yeah, a lot of carbs. Okay. <laughs> and so um, I I did that, and I started uh, pretty pretty low uh, in terms of what what I do now, um, and. I was I saw results pretty quickly um, within within like four to five weeks uh, I was gaining great muscle mass um, and so I kind of stuck with it and it's now been over a year and a bit now okay. and I, I have like kind of gone off it, but and you know I'm always testing the waters to see what works sure and uh, but I I feel more comfortable. I look more like best when following a cyclical ketogenic diet and okay. not being scared of carbs and using them for what yep. best for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, did you have any, you didn't have any health issues you, when you were that, that small, right? 125 pounds, 10%. That was just more of a being comfortable with yourself um, kind of a thing. So it wasn't like you needed to from a functional fitness perspective or health perspective, you didn't need to add muscle, but for where you wanted to be, how you felt just personally about yourself and everything else, it was more like a lifestyle decision. Yeah. At that point, like I said, like, you know, when I was seeing how lean I was getting and, you know, started seeing some muscle definition, I kind of like, you know, just said, well, I want to keep going now. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And so, uh, like I, I, I was, I've been in fitness since like my early twenties, but like I said, I, I, I did stop for a few years due to injuries and then mm-hmm. just kind of never went back at it until I changed my diet and started focusing on macros. Like I didn't even like pay attention to macros back in the sure, day. So, sure. so this whole keto world has totally changed my relationship with food and, and body composition in general. Right. right. So in your, in your experience in the last year or two years, um, what types of people or who are the people that you're seeing that are going to CKD? Cause not everybody necessarily, I mean, nobody necessarily needs to do it, right? It's more of a decision. I'm looking for X, Y, or Z. So what is it that the things people are looking for are drawing them to CKD outside of, okay, I'm super lean. Maybe I have a body type where I'm tall and lanky. I have a hard time growing muscle. Um, what are some other things that you see people doing that for? Uh well, first of all, it depending depending on the type of person you are, mm-hmm. um, it uh, it definitely um, is not for everyone. In terms of you know, you get to enjoy a lot of different kinds of foods. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's different approaches that you can take with the cyclical ketogenic diet. You know, there's people that that binge on uh, cereal. Um, 
Yeah. However, I, I, I still follow a primal way of eating. So I am completely grain free and legume free. Okay. Um, and the, there's really no reason uh, for me to eat that way. It's just kind of more of a moral ethical issue of how I've just always ate, like eaten. Sure. And sure. so um, with that said, anyone that follows CKD needs to be disciplined in terms of why, like in terms and basically just like they need to be disciplined and understand the why and how of, of incorporating carb, carb right. loads. Into right. their diet. It's not just because I want a cheat day, right? It's not about a cheat day at all, right? It's because I'm doing this for a specific reason. Adding these carbs, flipping my macros is going to do something physiologically to my body that's going to help me get to my goal. It's not about, oh, I get to eat ice cream today. Like it's, it's, it's <laughs> two it's completely not, different things, right? Definitely not. It's, it, and, and that's like a big misconception of the CKD of, is, is people use the term, it's a cheat day. Right. And it's by far not a cheat day. There's a protocol that's involved. Yeah. Um, you know, like the biggest uh, part of the CKD protocol is uh, the super compensation of glycogen. And so um, prior to the carb load, um, I've, there's a, a full body depletion workout that um, takes place. Okay. And it's, it's, you know, it's 1500 reps, takes about two to two hours, two and a half hours mm -hmm. of, of basically just exhausting the muscles, um, like, you know, each muscle group. Right, right. And uh, the idea is you deplete glycogen and to the point where when we do these carb loads, uh, it can take up, you know, you can refill glycogen up to 100 to 150 percent, depending on how effective the workout was. OK, OK. And then what does that do? So let's talk a little bit about what that that depletion and then re restoring of glycogen does to help add muscle. Yeah, so the idea of the CKD protocol was a ketogenic diet um, is great. Uh, however, during high intensity workouts, um, it's not really sustainable. Now, I don't really personally agree with that, but uh, neither do I, because that's a whole new, yeah, we can, I think there's, I think there's a very big difference between high intensity workouts and performance and what the, what the goal of the workout is. If the goal of the workout is work capacity and to do work, then I think ketogenic is perfectly fine. If the work, if the goal of the workout is to grow muscle, then no, I mean, you're going to get to a point, your body and my theory, I obviously have no science behind this, but from what I've seen over the past year or so is that once you get adapted to a point and if you are consistently training, your body fairly quickly is going to get to a level where it's, it's matched with what you're doing, right? The level you work is a level that you're gonna, that you're gonna perform at, as opposed to, and you're gonna get to a point, um, I talked to LL yesterday on a video and she talked about stretching that rubber band, right? You're gonna get to a point where you're training, you're stretching that rubber band and your body just isn't going to do more without you either seriously increasing the intensity, seriously increasing the volume, or for lack of a better word, hacking your system. And that's kind of what CKD is a little bit, a little hacking, Hacking where your genetic capacity is to say, look, we're, you're already at your max. Let's take it a little bit further and let's kind of go there. So I totally agree with you. Absolutely. And so um, the idea was basically to do these carb loads to refill my glycogen stores in the muscles and, um, you know, increase strength and performance throughout the week. And then yep. again, you would deplete at the end of the week, refill those to 150%. And so forth and so on. Okay. And uh, so, so that's the idea behind it. And I, I do use the tools of 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 refilling the glycogen stores to 150 percent. And I basically, as soon as I'm done the carb load, my next two days will be strength training for that reason. Gotcha. So you do say five or six days of keto. One or two days, two days, one day. How, what do you do? I follow a one day protocol. I've dabbled okay. into two days, but it's just, I don't really see any benefit. And okay. yeah, I just honestly, for me too, uh, by 
before the end of my carb load, I am sick of carbs and just right. can't wait right. to get back into steak and meat. <laughs> <laughs> steak and eggs. Yeah. Um, okay, so you do six days, then you do one day of carbs where you basically, so if your normal macros for keto are, let's just say, um, 100 grams of fat, or sorry, yeah, 100 grams of fat and 50 grams of carbs in a day. We'll just do some broad ones, right? And then, I don't know, 250 grams of protein. Then you may do still 250 grams of protein, but then you flip and you're doing only 50 or less grams of fat and then a crap ton of carbs. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when I first started, I, I started with 300 gram carb. Okay. And uh, now I've worked my way up um, and kept testing the waters. Sure. Uh, where now my macros are at least 800 grams of carbs in my okay. carb load, but okay. I keep fats under 20 grams. Under 20. Okay. Yeah, right. And, so and the primary reason, just for anybody listening, we don't want to mix carbs and fat at the same time, right? Because carbs is particularly in a carb load, right? Because every single, every single fat you eat at that point is going straight to your ass. Right. It's not <laughs> like it's just not your body's not going to do it anyway. You got all these carbs in there to work with first. Oh, yeah. So, you get you kick yourself out of ketosis and your body starts burning carbohydrates again. Right. And so instead of the carbs that you're eating getting put into fat storage, it's it's being used. Yep. And um, so you want to refrain from eating fats on that day to avoid fat storage from the from consumer. The fat. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then that's a good rule. And honestly, got um, I tell my clients and I talk to people all the time. It just that's a good rule of thumb in general. Like you know, in general, eating don't mix. And this, and I was thinking about it the other day. I was talking to somebody. I was like, you know what? I just realized all the carbs that I used to love to eat always have fat. Right? Yeah. It's always potatoes and butter, rice and butter, right? Pancakes and butter. Like it, it's <laughs> it's always number one butter. Um, or some carb and some kind of a fat. Like we're just so used to doing both, and then we wonder why have, we have all these problems with obesity and everything else. It's so funny. Someone was just telling me the other day. They're like, it's like, I don't really know anyone that just like, oh man, I cannot wait to just dive into a bowl of lollipops. <laughs> like, it's it's right. it's not like like it's not sugar cravings. It's right. definitely sugar plus fat or yeah. carbs plus fat. That absolutely, everyone. absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we got a little bit about what CKD is, um, some of the, the reasons. So getting back a little bit to some of the reasons why someone would do it, someone's having a hard time gaining muscle. Um, I see a lot of people who are try or bodybuilders or physique competitors who are trying to, trying to do stuff to um, maintain their leanness and kind of maintain a stage-ready look but still gain muscle. Um, and, it, and that's not to that extent because I'm not a competitor. But that is something that got me into keto carnivore um, and now carnivore because um, I got so tired of the whole idea. I always felt like I was on a roller coaster or a yo-yo. You know, I'd have to gain 15 pounds and 10 of it was fat in order for me to get any muscle. And then to get cut again, I had to lose, you know, 12 pounds and I maintained three pounds of muscle. But now I'm tiny and I'm weak and nothing. Yeah, it's just the back and forth and the back and forth of cut and bulk and cut and bulk got to be so annoying. Um, you know, so now I'm at a point where I've been carnivore for just over a year. Um, I've been able to add not a ton of muscle. I think I was, I started at like 162 pounds lean mass. Now I'm at like 165, almost 166. So about four pounds in a year, not crazy, but not bad. But the thing is I have, I've lost almost, 12, 17, seven, seven and a half percent body fat in that time, right? So I was at 17, 18, I'm down around 10. Um, and I've never been able to do that before. To be able to tell someone, I maintain a diet that I'm sustaining, I still enjoy, it doesn't stress me out, I don't think about food, I'm never starving. Yeah. Right? That's the big one, I'm never starving, never, right? Yeah. But I'm not losing muscle and I'm still maintaining my leanness. Like, Nobody does that. Nobody. It's just people like. There's no way that's possible. <laughs> we are living it is. right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what would your suggestions be to someone who's maybe looking at this to kind of say, how do I figure out if this is for me? 
Well, first of all, the being fat adapted uh, is a must okay. prior to going to CKD. You can't just jump into keto and, and start CKD. Um, I, I would suggest that, you know, a solid six to eight weeks of strict ketogenic protocol okay. um, and get that fat adaption, um, getting your body used to adapting to fat um, burning. And that would be first and foremost. Yep. And, and, and basically being honest with yourself, if you're the type of person that, you know, after a day of carb loading, you're going to, you know, get these cravings, you're going to not be so disciplined than you once were, then it is just not for you. And, and I also want to note that it's, it doesn't have to be carb loading to, to, for everybody. Like, uh, you know, you're saying you're speaking to Ella, like, uh, she does these protein refeeds and yeah. other, people, other people have even done fat loading and there's studies that show that, um, you know, that it, it, they respond very well. Um, with the, with these these increases of calories, right, um, and it's basically more or less a, a calorie cycle. Okay. Um, for me, I see the best results with carbs, and I respond very well. And I I I choose specific kinds of carbs in, uh, on my protocol, um, and I make it fun. You know, like I use a lot of tubers, and and I make my own pop tarts. Yep. 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 <laughs> and you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not, you are the, to... you're the CKD king and you're the yucca king. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> yes. I do love yucca. Uh, pure starch. Right. Anyway. Right. Uh, so yeah. Um, that would, that's, that's who I would say, uh, if anyone's interested, basically you would have to be honest with yourself. Okay. And you know what? I've also seen people that aren't very lean, um, but still follow a cyclical ketogenic diet for the psychological effects. Like, you know, um, I noticed that knowing that, you know, three or four days from in your week that you're going to have that carb load psychologically, that makes people not want to cheat during the week or, or you know, um, feel yeah. like they need to earn that carb load. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's so many different things. This is the thing that it just amazes me every day that I read something or talk to people, or work with someone or just all the different ways that the human body processes information, the way that we think about things, the different mindsets that people have, experiences people have had or, or where they're coming from. Like there's so many different ways that, you know, you have this conversation, we have this conversation. You're saying that in some ways it's, it can be good to help people sustain. Right. They know, OK, on Friday, I'm going to have something that's going to, you know, I'm going to get my carbs in. Um, maybe some of those carbs would be whole foods, natural tubers, whatever, things like that, veggies. Um, but you know what? There might be a pint of ice cream in there. Right. Whatever that is. Um, and that's going to sustain me through the week. Um, for someone else, having that thought and trying to do that could completely throw them off. 100%. And they could just be thinking about all, oh, all I want is that ice cream on Friday. Like. And that's all they're thinking about all week. And then they just <laughs> lose track of what they're doing for the rest of the week because all they want is that ice cream. And they're just thinking, you know, and then it comes Wednesday and they're like, oh, it's good enough. And they start eating their ice cream on Wednesday, right? So I, it's, it's just crazy. Um, I love what you said. Be honest with yourself. Um, I think it's super important to have a defined reason why you want to do it and what you think it's going to do for you, right? Yeah. Not just this sounds cool. Let me try it. But yeah. I have a specific goal and then compare your goal with what this is going to do. And if you think it's going to get you where you want to be, because if it's not, then don't even bother. Like there's other there's so many other options um, for think for you to do something. So, yeah, that's cool. OK. Um, you got any other any other thoughts, any last words? Uh, and what about resources, places people can go to kind of research CKD and maybe get information, talk to other people that are doing it? Uh, yeah, there's, hey, I'm there's interested, a thing, whatever. There's Facebook group, um, uh, uh, the Cyclical Ketogenic Diet Facebook group. Okay. Um, that's a great place. Um, they can also check out my uh, Facebook group, Nutrient Keto. Okay. Um, the, where we basically focus more so on nutrient dense density first and foremost. Yep. A lot of it happens to be keto. Some of it's paleo, some of it's primal. Sure. Um, but uh, there I have um, 
in the file section, uh, there's a protocol of, of what I do okay. for my cob ups awesome. and, and it lays everything out there. So you can, okay. Feel All right. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description for the video so we can get there. Um, and then what's your, if people want to look you up, you got a contact info hashtag or, uh, Handle, I go, what do they call it? These yeah, on, Inst on Instagram, I'm new, uh, at Nutrient Keto. Okay. And uh, like I said, the Facebook group. And that's that's all we got for now. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right, man. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll definitely have to get on some other time to talk about some other things. I'm sure there's other protocols and things you've played around with and looked at. Um, and then you can also talk to us about um, bloating and what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. Hey, thanks so much. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Peace.